Hypersonic weapons have been getting a lot of press coverage lately, so I thought I'd cut through some of the bullshit with this rapid fire brief. A hypersonic weapon is one that flies at speeds of at least Mark 5, that's 6,174 kilometers an hour, or to contextualize this for my American viewers, that is approximately 851 Babe Ruths laid end to end a second. They can be divided roughly into three categories, ballistic missiles, hypersonic boost glide vehicles, HGVs, and hypersonic cruise missiles. Ballistic missiles should be familiar to you all. They follow a ballistic arc that takes them outside of the Earth's atmosphere before re-entering at hypersonic speeds. Typically, ballistic missiles need to travel over 300 kilometers to re-enter at speeds above Mark 5. HGVs are launched by rockets in the same way as ballistic missiles. Where they differ is the re-entry. Instead of following a ballistic trajectory, the rockets boost the glide vehicles into a flatter trajectory, re-entering the upper atmosphere whereupon it uses aerodynamic lift to glide as it slowly descends in altitude, adopting a porpoising motion to extend range. Hypersonic cruise missiles are powered by high-speed, air-breathing, supersonic combustion ramjet engines, or scramjets, after acquiring their target. First being boosted by a rocket much like HGVs before following a high-altitude cruise trajectory at a constant speed and altitude within the atmosphere. Unlike ballistic missiles, hypersonic cruise missiles and HGVs use only kinetic energy to, to destroy the target. An old air and missile defense, or AMD, mentor of mine drilled into my head that in AMD, time is life. And that is what makes hypersonic weapons so dangerous. Their trajectories limit detection by terrestrial radar, and US defense officials have gone on the record stating that they are 10 to 20 times dimmer than ballistic missiles to US geostationary satellites. This compressed reaction time greatly affects the quality of the engaging unit's detect-to-engage sequence, forcing unit commanders to risk cutting corners in the hopes of attempting multiple interceptions. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and comment which rapid-fire brief you'd like to see next. Thank you.